Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, February uh, Rooftop Borough Council uh, Cabinet meeting. Uh, I understand there are no apologies for absence, Charlotte. Uh, moving on, declarations of interest. No declaration of interest. Okay, move item three, uh, the minutes from the meeting from the 11th of uh, December. Everything okay with those minutes? Can I have a uh, seconder? Councillor Mason. Thank you, all I'd the... like to second the minutes, okay. please. All, all those in favour to accept those minutes? Carried uh, unanimously. Okay, item four on the agenda is the group leader question. Uh, I understand we have a question from uh, Councillor McInnes. Thank what success has Streetwise had, had, Streetwise had in finding an alternative site and uh, progress on the decontamination of the Abbey Road site? So that can be done but developed for housing. Okay, I'll, take, I'll, I'll take those in, uh, in order. The relocation of the Council's uh, recycling to go service. There's a joint working group, Rushcliffe and Nottingham City is continuing to make good progress and the move of recycling to go to Eastcroft remains on track for April to June this year. Uh, regarding Streetwise and an alternative site, not a lot of news really, but Streetwise, sorry, Streetwise continue to explore alternative options for their location with the support of the council. And the decontamination of the Abbey Road site uh, full reports have been undertaken on the site and a remediation strategy will be put in place as part of the planning process. Okay, lovely. Councillor McInnes, your second uh, question. Uh, yes, uh, um, I just have a concern, I think it's a concern rather than a question, that uh, we will, uh, uh, the, the strategy will make the date, I think it's a year from now, we haven't completed. Oh, no, you've got to ask a question, Councillor. Sorry, Leader, the, 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 you must ask the question. It's not any no, other I statement. Mean, but I but, no, but it was, yeah. I understood you had two questions. Yeah. Uh, the second question, yeah, I'll move to the, to the uh, uh, second question. Yeah, yeah. Councillor uh, Eddie Van, Portfolio Holder for Economic Growth and Business. What work has been completed by officers to progress the council's ambition to build housing on the depot site, which would provide the following. A. Much needed additional housing. Assist in meeting the five-year housing supply of land. And C. Deliver further economic growth within the borough, and therefore help the council to achieve its corporate priorities. Thank you. Um, I can report the following on from the Cabinet report of October 2018. A design team has been appointed and briefed to deliver a residential project for the Abbey Road site. As Councillor McInnes knows, we are very proud of our record as a council of delivering affordable housing, having delivered more affordable housing than any other borough or district in Nottinghamshire. That's a question. Thank, 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 thank you very much, Councillor McInnes. Um, I've, I've still got a follow up question. Um, no, you can't. No, just the two questions. This is two separate, two separate. Uh, yeah. Just bear with us a second. Two separate uh, big questions. Not, not. Uh, this is not the follow-up question. I've got to follow that. I'm going to the second. <laughs> okay. There's just... two different portfolio holders I'm uh, aiming at. Uh, I think for the purposes of clarity, we received two questions from from the leader, uh, the opposition leader, and those two questions have been booked to cabinet. And the constitution allows you to book questions that are notified, not questions that are not notified. Um, the, I, I see that you consulted uh, the monarch uh, officer. Sir. Quite right. Um, yes. But, uh, it was very clear that these were two separate questions. Two different people. 
and, but you've and, asked two and, questions. And you have asked the questions, and they've been answered by two no, different I, people. I, 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 what yeah, happened was, on the separate relocation, that's why they've got different uh, uh, titles. Yeah. Separate them very clearly out. So, and I've, I've had a, 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 a supplementary question on the depot. There is, and I then yeah. read out, because it was the second question, um, then I'd expect the opportunity to actually um, uh, 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 have a follow-up question. <coughs> no, this isn't like council, Councillor McInnes. The council, in council, you're allowed to ask a question and a supplementary question. For cabinet questions, it's the written question is put to the, count, the cabinet member and it's only that written question and that answer has been given. So you're quite correct. You have asked two separate questions and they've been answered by two separate portfolio holders. But they were, I think you tried to think you had the right to come back with the supplementary on the first, but we interrupted you because you don't. The uh, then you would expect that uh, you would be able to ask a, a, a follow-up question as well. Uh, leader uh, and Chairman, I've given the explanation to the councillor, okay. and I think uh, that it should be resumed outside the room if uh, required, and it is part of the council's constitution, which was approved yeah. by council. Okay. Okay, so uh, we'll move on now from uh, item four. Move on to item five, which is the citizen question, and I believe, uh, Ms. Saul, you're going to... Ask the question, yes. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, question has been received from Ms. Keris Thomas as follows. The authority to grant outline planning permission for the land south of Clifton was delegated to the executive manager, Bracket Communities, on the 25th of January 2018. So, that, so the council's decision to grant permission is now hurtling towards its first birthday. Why has the planning permission not yet been granted? Every delay worsens the prospects for attaining, stroke maintaining, the five-year housing land supply you require and moves more projected completions beyond the current plan period, meaning that additional sites have to be found elsewhere. I understand that government grant was awarded to help provide roads for the Clifton development. Is there a time limit for spending it? Let's go to Councillor Upton. Thank you, Chair. The delivery of this strategic site has been and continues to be a top priority for this council. Officers worked hard to get the council approval to the development, which was achieved uh, at the planning committee in early 2018, subject to the completion of a section 106 uh, agreement. Over the last 12 months, officers have been engaged with the lead developer in finalising this agreement, so permission can be issued. Despite officers' hard work, the completion of the Section 106 agreement is outside the control of the Council and relies on the agreement of the consortium of the landowners. This situation is not unusual for large complex sites that require significant long-term investment. It's hoped that in the very near future the Section 106 agreement can be completed and then further detailed planning applications can be progressed for the delivery of the housing, employment and the required infrastructure. We continue to work closely with Homes England, who understand the difficulties we are facing and are seeking to provide appropriate support, officer and financial support. Like many authorities, we still uh, await formal feedback from them in relation to the housing infrastructure grant provisionally identified for the site. In summary, I can assure you that the delivery of this site remains a top priority of the Council. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So that concludes the uh, the questions. So uh, moving on to item six is the MGM strategy. Councillor Upton. Thank you. Um, this report recommends that we approve an empty home strategy for 2019 to 2024, as the majority of other local authorities have done. Since 2010, the government has encouraged the return of empty homes into use. And in October 2017, it estimated there were 606,000 empty homes in England, of which 205,000 were classed as long-term empty, namely longer than six months. Returning empty properties back into use can be quick and cost-effective way of increasing housing supply and also improving the lives of the adjacent residents and their communities. This report details a strategic framework and an action plan for this council to deal with empty homes in the borough. 
But I don't propose to go through the detail, but rather to highlight the main issues and the recommendations. There are about 900 empty properties in Rushcliffe, and around 375 of these have been empty for more than six months. And nearly 100 of these have been empty for more than two years. It's these longer term empty homes which cause most concern as they're more likely to remain empty for longer without intervention and they're also more likely to be an increasing source of complaint. Long term empty properties can be detrimental to the lives of local residents and communities with issues such as vandalism, pests, overgrown gardens, fly tipping, criminal activity etc and they put pressure on our environmental services. <coughs> When dealing with empty properties, a voluntary solution is always preferred, and for the vast majority of cases, this usually works. But in some cases, the use of enforcement action is required. This strategy has a methodology to identify the problem and an agreed process to manage it. The proposed strategy went to public consultation in October last year and to the Community Development Scrutiny Group in November, and there was overwhelming support from both of them. In 2011, the government confirmed that councils can get additional funding under the new homes bonus scheme for bringing empty properties back into use by the government matching the council tax raise, council tax raised for each property brought back into use. And currently, this applies for four years. Also, councils can now increase the amount of council tax paid on empty properties. Since April last year, this council has charged an empty homes premium of 150% on the basic council tax for properties that have been empty for two years or longer. And from April this year, it's proposed to increase it to 200% in line with central government policy. And I think that's mentioned later on this evening. This is Rushcliffe's first empty home strategy. It aims to give an understanding of the issues of empty homes, what they cause and how they impact on local communities. It looks at why homes become empty, and what advice and assistance can be given to the owners and how the council will use the range of powers it has to return the empty homes back into use. Tackling empty homes in a methodical way and bringing them back into use will benefit our residents, including people in housing need and the wider community for whom empty homes often cause problems. I support the recommendation in item two of the report, namely, it's recommended that Cabinet A approve the empty home strategy 2019 to 2024 and B the executive manager neighbourhoods be authorised to make minor revisions to the strategy during its lifespan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Upton. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Edivine. Uh, yes, I fully endorse uh, what Councillor Upton has said about the proposed strategy. And I'd like to comment that... Um, Following our introduction of an increased council tax last year. Can you like it or not? Yeah, following um, the increase in the council tax last year, I've just seen in my own ward, or in fact in my own village, uh, two houses that have come back into market use as a result of increasing that. So that's clearly working. It's it's further enhanced. And, um, you yeah, know, the extra measures, the new policy and its additional proposals can only help even further to get to get empty housing back into uh, into use. And I would therefore like to second the recommendation on page five, paragraph two. Okay. Any other comments? I'd just like to make, I think, a couple of comments. I think in the context, how much pressure we are under housing in terms of delivering over 13,000 2028, I think this is a very important policy. Uh, and quite rightly, residents look at the 900 properties that are empty. Uh, quite um, right. And so, you know, what's the challenge to us to, to make sure we get those into? I think my second point, it would be interesting over this, maybe the next 12 months, to look how many houses we're actually bringing back as a result of this policy. I know we can't obviously directly, but uh, it will be interesting in a year's time just to see that uh, hopefully the very positive effect, and I think it's, uh, it's an excellent policy. So uh, proposed by Councillor Upton, second by Councillor Edivine. All those in favour of the recommendation? So, unanimous. Thank you. Okay, going on to item uh, 
8, which is the Bingham Leisure Centre Review of the Chapel Lanes site. Councillor Mason. Thank you. Um, this report is an interim one and supports the Bingham Master Plan. Um, looking forward, it is asking the Cabinet to move to the next stage, which includes a new leisure centre, community hall and a standalone offices. The drawing at the end of the report, they are purely um, indicative and of what it could be. The master plan for Bingham wishes to bring together the new housing development with employment and Bingham, which is south of the railway line. The school site, due to differing land levels, um, could not be supported um, as a new build and the present uh, one is not suitable for refurbishment but as the sports hall and outdoor facilities are remaining on the site exit terms will have to be um, currently agreed and they are going well and community access to the sports hall um, and the outside will also be agreed between Nova Education Trust, Lex Leisure and the Council. Um, Leeds advisories uh, were appointed to study a business case for mixed development on the site um, and due diligence review of a previous study. The options appraisal is in Appendix 1 and the options also for funding, external funding, are in Paragraph 4.7 and various of these options have been um, considered. I, I feel that this is a really exciting and looking to the future type of report. I have been um, chairman of the um, Bingham Growth Board and it has led to much discussion about Bingham as a whole. And this is one of the main points of Bingham and the future that it will hold, which will uh, blend in um, also with the centre of Bingham. I hope that uh, we will support this um, tonight but also um, I must point out that a, cab uh, a cabinet member group is going to be formed as it was when this building was built um, and this will oversee this very <coughs> exciting um, project that you see before you. Uh, there's all sorts of supporting information and other information, but I, I will not go through that. I take it that the report has been read. I will cut, say, um, go through all the recommendations, though, because I think they are all important and there are a few of them. Um, it's recommended that Cabinet acknowledges the outcome of the options appraisal, which is at, at, towards the end. It shows a diagram at the end and approves the preferred option of a new leisure centre with a community hall and a standalone offices, authorises the procurement of a professional team to proceed to the next stage of, de of design, planning approval and tender development. Also for a former cabinet-led member group to oversee the leisure aspects of this report. It also notes the financial implications identified within the report and approves the inclusion of 20 million in the Council's capital programme, together with the funding and resource implications associated with this development in the Council's medium term financial strategy um, this, and to be presented to full Council. And the last one is receives a further report once successful <coughs> planning permission has been achieved with pre tender estimates and any revised funding consequences. So I'd like to put forward those recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. I have a seconder. Councillor Um Yes, as has been said, this, is, this report is very much in line with our continuing goal as a, as a council of providing high quality leisure facilities. Bingham itself is due to have a significant amount of new housing and there are plans to create employment opportunities. And the Growth Board has been developing the master plan and, has, and this has included public <coughs> consultation, which on this matter has been very positive. 
The feasibility study, study has rightly identified the issues with the leisure centre as it exists and its shared access with the Toot Hill School. And our ownership of Chapel Lane, the Chapel Lane land provides obvious opportunity to create a new facility at the heart of an enlarged Bingham. The proposal also addresses the long-standing desire of the people of Bingham, Bingham to have a community centre. Uh, this recommendation deals with the, with the first steps to making the new leisure facility a reality, but it also deals with, the wider, with a wider plan and adds value to the Chapel Lane site through the proposal to create employment through a standalone office development, which I will also be excited to see coming to fruition. And I therefore second the recommendation as set out in paragraph two on page 42. Thank you very much. Any comments at all? Councillor Upton. Thank you. I've built and maintained many class buildings in the UK in my working career. They served a purpose at the time, skill shortage and all the rest of it. But take it from me, this one, a 1960s class building, the current leisure centre, is beyond its design life. And it was built at a time when energy efficiency was not really thought about. The roofs, the structure, it's all prefabricated from a factory. It leaks energy like nobody's business. And so from my perspective, knowing it intimately and others like it, Class Mark III, to spend any more money on it would be a complete waste of money. There would be no value for money in it at all. It's beyond its design life. Far, far <coughs> better to build, as this report says, on level ground in what will become the centre of Bingham when the development to the north of the railway line is completed, a new purpose-built leisure centre as described. That's the vision, that's what I support. Because the current one doesn't owe us anything. It's been there 45, coming 50 years, I guess. Standards have changed. For instance, you know, access for the disabled, part M of the building regs, not around in the 1960s. It's on a slope. It has a lot of negatives about it. So I really am supportive of a new build for the 21st century. And uh, along with the joint use agreements, they were fine in their day. They were done when the local education authority owned the school, the authority owned the school, the authority owned the school, the authority owned the school.